So, um, so let me just uh, do this one last time. This time, just myself and maybe calculator. I'll have a calculator ready in case I need it. Um, yeah, do I need to? And I'll, um, yeah, I, I'm trying gonna try. I'm going to try to avoid writing on screen if I can, because that kind of takes time, and I want to uh, try to go through as quickly as I can. So, okay. So um, because I'm trying to do, do this as quickly as possible, I'm not going to explain a lot. I'll just uh, go through um, as quickly as I can. Okay. Uh, velocity, same velocity, rolling without slipping. Farther up the incline, it should be the ring. Yeah, because larger rotation means larger energy. Two objects, uh, I should have made the figure smaller. Um, a lot of fall from rest at the same time, correctly describes, okay. Have the same mass, yeah, because the ball is at a higher height compared to the center of mass of the rod. Um, the rest, uh, yeah, uh, nothing that uh, appears more correct than that. Okay, choose the statement which correctly defines or describes. Torque, um, uh, no, because lever arm can change. Greater lever arm, a given force, yeah. So that sounds correct. Let me check the rest. Torque is necessary. No. It, this is a rotational version of Newton's first law contradiction. <laughs> Torque is equal to which? No. Um, I think there might be context where people do that, but not physics. Choose the correct description of precession. Precession refers to... Um, it doesn't refer to the tilt, although it could refer to like changing of the tilt. <laughs> or in Rotational stability, uh, no, not really. Um, change, you know, spinning object, when, yeah, this is it. It's the bicycle one. Uh, necessity of, no, um, this, that doesn't really have a name other than reaction torque, oh, which might be coming from here. Which of the Newton's laws explain why? Tend to rotate the opposite. Newton's third law, the law of interaction, the action reaction torque. This curve some mass and some radius and a small mass attached to the edge rotating at that. The small mass, okay. It, this requires, oh wait, it doesn't require calculation. Let me do that. <laughs> so it's got some mass. It's got some mass at the edge. Um, it's spinning at some speed. If the mass slides gradually to the center, angular momentum, it sounds like it should be conserved. No external torque. So, um, but the uh, angular momentum is conserved, but the rotational inertia is decreasing, so angular speed must be increasing. Kinetic energy, surprisingly, is not conserved. It's going to increase. Um, it's just conserve total angular momentum, this spins faster, yeah. There's actually work being done in order to move that in. You can work that out using, um, using how much force you need to overcome uh, the centrifugal force, <laughs> or how much centripetal force you need to provide to gradually move it inward. Okay, this uh, most correctly why it falls over. It is the increasing angle, clockwise torque. Yeah, I explained it in the other question. The you know the, the gravity is providing clockwise torque as the angle increases. It's decreasing to zero and then it turns negative or counterclockwise. Um, yeah, the rest seems fine. Question A: Carpenter's ladder. Oh, I love this example. Um, even though the secure at the bottom. It's, yeah, she, so it's being secure at the bottom doesn't mean when she's at the top, it'll be still be secure. Physics of the situation, compared to couldn't securely, if, it, no, gravitational acceleration won't matter. It'll cancel out of all the expressions. Um, because it's relative. No, it has nothing to do with the total mass, although it has to do with the location of center of mass. Slider, yeah. when the wall pushes, yeah. That's uh, what you end up realizing when you do the static equilibrium analysis. The normal force from the wall increases as the carpenter climbs up. Yeah, friction force, it doesn't decrease. It increases up to a limit. Okay, question nine. Uh, escape velocity is about 11 kilometers per second. Yeah, pretty high. Uh, what does this mean faster than on Earth? Ignore it. Okay, <laughs> so it's not gonna burn up. <laughs> um, it means it can escape the gravitational pull of the Earth, I think. It's moving fast enough to be in a, not a stable orbit, uh, because it's gonna escape Earth's pull. Uh, yeah, th this is describing low Earth orbit. Again, no. Uh, 
as you know, of kinetic energy, yeah, arbitrarily far away from Earth, it can go on an unbound orbit. Uh, I don't think it's uh, fast enough to leave the solar system. It might, um, I'm pretty sure it, it doesn't exceed the uh, escape velocity of the sun from the Earth uh, orbit. Although we can double check, let me just double check afterwards. <laughs> Uh, on object moving faster than 11 kilometers a second on Earth. Well, yeah, we are ignoring air resistance, so this doesn't apply. Okay, the moon orbits Earth at that speed, roughly circular. Earth is in a perfectly stationary center of mass. Find the radius of circular orbit of Earth. Oh, the easiest thing to do is to work through this uh, center of mass relationship. Um, do I have time to write this out? Uh, Got, yeah, I have time to write this out. So uh, the expression for center of mass goes as uh, the coordinate of center of mass is the mass times um, or m1 times r1 plus m2 times r2. I'm writing this as vectors, m1 plus m2. So there's a way to do this in a kind of um, simpler way so that you don't have to do a lot of math. So I can consider an axis uh, connecting Earth and the Moon, where the center of mass is um, at the zero point of this um, um, of this thing. Then what should be uh, true is that this uh, distance, let me call that R2 times M2, that must be equal to this distance, let me call that R1 um, times M1. Uh, the magnitude-wise, this must equal that. So that um, when you calculate the center of mass, making one of these negative, the center of mass can turn out to be zero. So the center of mass of the Earth should be just uh, um, orbital distance. Um, let's say 5 times 10 to the power of 8 meters divided um, times the mass of the moon, um, 7 times 10 to the power of 22 kilograms, divided by mass of the earth, um, 6 times 10 to the 24. Um, and this should give me the, the earth's distance from the center of uh, mass, or the orbital distance of earth. Um, 0 0.46 times 10 to the 7. Okay, let's see if uh, 0 0.46 times 10 to the 7. Oh, so that should be this. 5 times 10 to the 6. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay, so uh, let's clear this. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's the last one. Let me just uh, make sure I answered everything. Um, see progress. Okay, answer that. Then, then. So it should be 100%, um, we'll see. <laughs> uh, with these late semester topics, sometimes I might miss one or two, especially when I'm trying to go too fast. I'm submitting this with the two minutes left. Let's hope it's 100%, uh, which it might not be, we'll see. I joke if it's not 100%, it'll be embarrassing, but uh, it's not necessarily a joke. Okay, good, I got 100%, good.